Welcome to Humans, a documentary, where we will examine the puzzling world of human social behavior from the perspective of someone with mild Asperger's. I'm your host, Kyle Eschen, and over the course of this series, we will attempt to document the rules that govern the social world. Ostensibly to help my fellow Aspies, but in reality it will serve as a cheap narrative trick that will afford lazy writing downstream. Now today's topic is humor. What is humor? What makes something funny? Why do we laugh? We're going to explore these topics today, and not to inflate my own balloons. But I'm no stranger to laughter, having undergone it twice myself. Neither time was pleasant, but both were memorable. The first occurred at the party where a man received a letter confirming that he had been ensnared in the dilemma from Oedipus Rex. A horrified silence filled the room, punctuated only by one merciful soul who yelled awkward in a high-pitched sing-song voice. The room collapsed into laughter, as did I, for it was, in fact, awkward. Particularly as this was an individual who, after reading the book Freshman Year, adamantly insisted that this would never happen to him. And I believe that's what the Greeks call hubris. Of course, once the laughter died down, there followed an extended session of condemnation and gloating. The second laugh occurred as I watched the world-famous comedian Horatio Bagg, known for his catchphrase, We were all thinking it, and his signature political style, in which he speaks truth to power by ridiculing the least favored politicians of his self-selected viewership. On this occasion, he enacted an impression of Howard Schultz that truly resonated. I laughed, then spent five to seven seconds bathing my brain in the sweet neurochemical I'm nectar so of right. confirmation. Kyle, bias. you're enlightened. Kyle, Kyle, the show was a good idea. Impressions, political humor, piping up awkward in a crowded room. What is the essence of humor, which encompasses such broad phenomena as observational comedy, puns, memes, inside jokes, callback humor, self-deprecation, meta-humor, and humor that confirms our pre-existing beliefs. Finally, someone's talking about how comedians just tell people what they want to hear. Can we develop a grand unified theory of humor? A simple, parsimonious model for why we laugh at the things that we do. Through extraordinary effort, I managed to book an interview with comedian Horatio Bagg. You've been performing for over 20 years. How has your understanding of laughter evolved? I increasingly see laughter as being social at its core. It's so much easier to make people laugh if everyone else is laughing. That's why we have laugh tracks. When you whip a crowd into a sufficient frenzy, you can basically say anything and people will laugh. Come on, we were all thinking it. Now that I think about it, that probably explains the failure of my avant-garde HBO special, Stand Up for a Crowd of One. I'll respond to that with a completely unrelated, pre-prepared question. Can you give me some rules that can reliably generate comedy? No, it's all intuition. It can be refined through practice, but comedy requires surprise. It's all about norm violation, so almost by definition it can't be codified. This was troubling to hear for reasons beyond the demands of the episode. Years ago, when they started to automate all the magic jobs, I took an intro coding class, and from that constructed a rudimentary artificial intelligence. His name is Herbert. For years now, he's been studying to take the Turing test, which certifies him to do human jobs. Social construct. His dream is to join the academy. Social construct. Social construct. Objective measure of human value. As an aside, while there are many who warn about the dangers of unfriendly AI, as an introvert, I will confess that I am far more alarmed by the prospect of overly friendly AI. Hey, what's up? Herbert can mimic many vital behaviors but I can't quite capture the intricacy of humor within his code. I need a higher level pattern. I decided to turn to the ivory tower. I managed to score an interview with Bertha Shujao, superstar social scientist, known both for being the first academic to ever hit a platinum citation count, and for being banned from Davos for controversial comments made under the influence of severe sleep deprivation. I was thrilled to get an interview with her, as she's another intellectual hero of mine. What is humor? 
Why do we laugh? It all has to do with a concept from game theory called common knowledge. Is that like information that everyone knows? No, that's mutual knowledge. Common knowledge is a different beast entirely. Are you familiar with the Hans Christian Andersen fable, The Emperor's New Clothes? Well, we've all seen it. Well, I'll recount it anyway, as exposition induces in me a high comparable to that of heroin, or perhaps the Buddha Shanas. The tailor to the king tells him that he will sew him a special outfit that can only be seen by intelligent people. However, the tailor is a con man and sews him nothing, but the king can't admit it or everyone will know that he's without brain. All the townspeople can't admit they can't see the clothes, lest they also reveal that they're without brain. And so they performatively gawk in admiration. Well, in my mind, I see clothes. The emperor's nakedness is mutual knowledge. Everyone knows that the king is naked, but critically, they don't know that everyone else knows. No one dares speak their mind. Or perhaps they're without brain, because to reiterate, in my mind, I see clothes. I swear, by Mother Nature's sweet navel, you need to hold that unholy larynx of yours static. One day the emperor parades through the crowd and a child yells out, The emperor is naked! And what do people do? They laugh. And suddenly everyone knows that everyone else knows what they know. And everyone knows that everyone knows that everyone knows. And everyone knows that everyone knows that everyone knows that everyone knows. And everyone knows that everyone knows that everyone knows that everyone knows that everyone knows. I've actually published a paper for each of those levels of infinite recursive modeling, which represents about 90% of my platinum citation count. The point is that it's not enough to know the truth. You can't just have mutual knowledge. You need common knowledge, that infinite reciprocal awareness that everyone else is on the same page. Even if everyone hates the king, if everyone thinks that they're alone in that hatred, they can't coordinate to bring him down. And laughter is an honest signal of people's true beliefs. And what makes it honest, what makes it reliable, is the low chance of false positives and negatives. Laughter is both hard to fake and hard to suppress. When a joke lands, we subconsciously harvest social information. We subconsciously conduct accurate polls about the true beliefs of a crowd, beliefs that people might want to conceal. That's why humor that involves taboos or ridicules the powerful can be so explosively funny. It's triggering amusement on its primary axis. I ran this theory by Horatio to see how it resonated with her practitioner. I like that theory because it allows me to plausibly maintain that I'm speaking truth to power, even though I'm just regurgitating the pre-existing sentiments of my viewers. It's not the content of my jokes that speak the truth. It's the reaction to my jokes. It's the social metadata because by laughing or by retweeting or by upvoting, my fans are signaling to both each other and to the powerful just how strong our coalition is. And what if coalition strength is already common knowledge? Well, then it's just a self-congratulatory cash grab. Well, at least he's self-aware. Now enlightened, I quickly return to incorporate these insights into Herbert's design. And so rule number one is that if you want to make people laugh, say what everyone's already thinking, but no one dares to say. This will create what's called common knowledge. Is that like information that everyone already knows? So have we found our grand unified theory of humor? Well, we still have a lot of episodes to film, so obviously freaking not. Sure, common knowledge explains political humor, but what about inside jokes, memes, puns, self-deprecation, meta-humor, or our starter packs? Does it explain why jokes get old with repetition and cycle so quickly in and out of fashion? Does it explain why certain norm violations are benign while others are deeply offensive? If laughter, if laughter just tells us what we already know, then why is surprise such an important part of humor? Why does predictability kill a joke? All of your questions can be explained with common knowledge. I have built my career around that concept, and through motivated reasoning and sunk cost alone, I will find a way to coerce all of those anomalies into something explainable through my theory. Bertha Shujao does not issue retractions. And I have full faith in her ability to do this, as she is the recipient of the Nobel Participation Trophy in Sociology. Or 2016, tildelas Vems Dylan.
Whoa! No, 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 no. I, I was asleep when the call came. Please tune in to the next episode of Humans, a documentary, where we examine humor through the lens of signaling, counter-signaling, and the social phenomenon of being basic. Once more, please join his channel and his Patreon. I can't take any more of his ceaseless whining. Is it off?